and I'm very happy and glad to be here and I would like to express my thanks again for inviting me. It's a, I think it's a very nice morning meeting we have here and I like that dialogue. Um, I'm a dermatologist so I'm coming from a different angle and um, of course the Eden study is ongoing so I cannot present you the final results but what I want to do in the next uh, 25 minutes is um, to give you an overview about fragrance as allergens and what has to be done and why this study is so important to do. And um, to discuss a little bit what is published in the literature and um, telling you that it is not so easy uh, to do with it. So, of course, the background is quite clear. The exposure to chemicals or to cosmetics is massive and it is inevitable that adverse effects occur. Allergy contact dermatitis from cosmetics is quite common and fragrances and preservatives are the most culprits. But let's look a little bit more in details. Of course, uh, I will start in my lecture with what means sensitivity to cosmetics because it doesn't mean you are allergic. And then I will speak a little bit about how to diagnose and all the problems of patch testing because I think this is a major problem. And uh, last but not least, what do we know about exposure data? And then you will see how important it is to run a really epidemiological studies of high quality in the general population. And I will end up with some clinical consequences. Of course, this would be more interesting for the dermatologist. But I tell them every time they have to consider the problem very seriously and be aware of what they are doing and therefore they need these clinical consequences when they are doing patch testing. Now uh, there are some papers from uh, the United States but also from the UK um, dealing with the adverse events from fragrances and uh, here was written that in the United Kingdom 23% of women and about 13.8% of men experience some sort of adverse events to a personal care product over the course of a year. In the US population, this is a recent report from the year 2009, it's uh, sent products on other irritating 30.5% adverse health effects from air freshener in about 19% and um, irritation by seen laundry products in about 10.9%. But of course, what I mentioned before, these are not allergic reactions. And uh, it was done in a study in, in Denmark um, many years ago, um, adverse effects to cosmetics that that does not mean contact sensitization. And here it was clearly demonstrated that about 50 uh, about 50% reported skin redness, itching, or rashes after the use of our cosmetic products. However, only 2.3% of them were sensitized to fragrance mix 1, and 1.3% were sensitized to balsam of Peru. Of course, in cosmetic products, there are a lot of other ingredients, and not only fragrances. I mean, the preservatives are playing an important role. And later on, we will look a little bit more in details about what the sensitization means, because um, what is important that sensitization not always mean that is also an allergic contact dermatitis. Well, that's quite complicated. Here, there were only tested the fragrance mix one. The fragrance mix one goes back to Larsen in the year 1977, and I think you are all familiar with the substances uh, which are in the fragrance mix one. I don't have to go into details and of course there are some cross reactions well known uh, to one of those um, substances. Most of our knowledge is really based on patch test data from patients and of course they are based, biased in many ways and I will present some of those patch test data from Europe. There was a study published in the year 2005 from the Euro European Environmental Contact Dermatitis Research Group. I'm a member of that group and we collected patch test data from clinical patients to the standard series all over Europe in 10 different centers and what you see here is the leading allergen of course is nickel, much more frequent in females compared to males but then 
The second ring is the fragrance mix one, about 9%, and then some metals like uh, cobalt, I mean, is associated to nickel and dichromate. And if you look a little bit closer to the fragrance mix one, then we see here the range within Europe was found between 5 and 12%, and balsam of Peru, the same between 2.8 and 10.9%. So it's quite a number of patients showing a positive pitch test reaction. But again, what I would like to mention is these are pitch test patients. They are patients with a contact dermatitis. This is not the general population. And what is missing in most of these studies, of course, is other fragrances. Other fragrances have not been tested so far. That was the reason why a new fragrance mix was introduced some years ago, because it was demonstrated in a European study that about 30% more fragrance allergic patients could be detected by using the fragrance mix too. And therefore, the, it was recommended that the European baseline patch series should include the fragrance mix too. We did so in Germany for some years, and therefore I will now present you some uh, German data from the EVDK uh, from the year, uh, which also includes a fragrance mix too. What you see here, these uh, six different allergens are included in the fragrance mix too, plus Lyral in 5%. It is um, in the fragrance mix too in 2.5%, but in addition, it will be tested in the pitch to series in 5% um, in the new standard series, at least in in uh, Germany. Here is a positive reaction, a 1 plus or a 2 plus reaction, but you see also this was the judgment of the leading um, dermatologists in the European Environmental Contact Dermatitis Group 5 saw this a 2 plus and 5 a 1 plus reaction. So it's sometimes difficult to say is it a 1 or a 2 plus reaction. That's an additional, can be an additional problem. These are the data from 2007 and 2008 and what you can see here is uh, 2007, 2008, that Balsam of Peru, the fragrance mix, the old Larsen fragrance mix, the fragrance mix one, how we call it today, no change over the years, and then the fragrance mix two, an additional um, nearly 5% positive reaction in patch test patients, and uh, in the fragrance mix two, we know that the leading allergen is Lyral, and therefore we found about 2% uh, in Lyral. But again, what I told you that this knowledge about contact dermatitis is derived from clinical case reports, clinical studies, and in and out patients. And these data sources have their limitation, and the data must be interpreted very carefully, independent from the problem of sensitivity and specificity by doing a patch test. I will come to that later. So, therefore, I think there is a need for epidemiological studies in the general population. And uh, this year, at the beginning, uh, or last year, there was published a paper from Jacob Tyson from Denmark. And what he did is a systematic review. And he identified 19 studies dealing with contact sensitization to fragrances or to allergens in general in the general population. But you see also the uh, diversity of these studies the sample size vary between 82 and more than 2,500 patients, and I think a sample size of 82 is really rather small concerning the general population. And even one can argue that 2,005, to detect uh, rare allergens, the number will not be uh, large enough to do so. Also, the participation rate, a very crucial point, between 20 and 80 percent, and then different patch tests systems were used, the true test, the EPIQUIC, the standard patch test in 11 of that studies, and also variations in reading, reading day three, but in six studies only at day seven. And what they then did, they tried to calculate some kind of weighted prevalence in adults based on 13 of these studies, and they came up with a frequency of 3.7% according to the fragrance mix 1 and balsam of Peru 1.6%. And no study on fragrance, six, fragrance mix uh, uh, 2 so far. But again, I mean, even if you merge bad data or bad clinical or epidemiological data, the result will not become better, of course. So um, there are a lot of 
methodological concerns in these studies in just comparing those data from all over the world, which not using the same um, study protocol, not the same methods in reading, not the same methods in patch testing, um, gives a lot of concern, of course. Here, this is an overview about the different studies. For example, here from Norway, these are a study in stent patients. I think stent patients are really not representative for the general population, of course. A study in, in twins or a small study really in the general population in some volunteers in Australia and in male cadets from Italy. Now there is also a study from Denmark about contact sensitization in general, not only to fragrances, and they used the um, standard series in school children, the study from um, Klaus Andersen's group, and they came up with 1.6% in girls and 2.1% positive reactions to fragrance mix one. But again, and I will explain you that later, that a positive reaction doesn't mean a contact allergy or a contact dermatitis or a clinical problem. So the problem or the challenge to interpretation is uh, to make sure is it an irritant or an allergic pet test reaction, what is a contact allergy, whether it's an allergic contact dermatitis, and last not least, do we patch test or do we test the responsible allergen? That's also a reasonable question. Now, um, in this context, I would like to share some quite new data, I think that will be published soon from uh, Klaus Andersen's group. And what he did is he tested two different test systems to identify or using the fragrance mix one. One is a very standardized patch system, that's the true test, and the other one is from Chemotechnik or Trollab, or what we use in, in, in Germany, Hamal, that's very similar. So two different fragrance mixes, all are declared as fragrance mix one in about 5,000 eczema patients. So these are clinical data again, but they demonstrate to you the problem of patch testing. And in addition, the clinical relevance was recorded as present or past relevance. And the results, first of all, you see again 9.9 .9 positive reaction. That's very similar to what we have found before in Germany and also in the, in the um, European group. The paper from the year 2005 was a little bit lower, but 9.9% .9 positive reaction. But interestingly, out of these nearly 500 patients, only 187 had a positive reaction to Bohr's patch test systems. And uh, 207, 277 were only positive to the TROLOP system, and 31 only positive to the true test system. So the test systems come up to different results and significant differences between the two uh, systems. And that's, I think, is very remarkable from a clinical point of view and tell you how careful you should deal with a positive reaction then, and even that a positive reaction not always means um, sensitization. And then what they did is, uh, if a patient had a positive reaction to one of the, the mixes, the individual constituents of the mix were tested in addition. And interestingly, when there was only a one plus reaction, and in our clinical practice, more than half of the patients show a one plus reaction, not a strong reaction, not a two plus or a three plus reaction, or a doubtful reaction. Sometimes it's difficult to say, is it a doubtful reaction or is it a one plus reaction? And if you have a one plus reaction, then only few, and uh, for the true test it was half of the patient, 54%, but for the troll up only 29%, shows all, also a reaction to one of the individual constituents. Only if you had a strong reaction, a 2 plus or a 3 plus reaction, then you also find a high percentage of positive reactions to the individual constituents of the mix. In the true test it was for a 2 plus reaction, 80% and for a 3 plus reaks 100% for Trollab, again lower 74 or 96%. So reliable, of course, is a 3 plus a very strong reaction.